Tell us what's going on, the latest news about uh, the XRP case. I think today, I, I'm not sure if there was a delay. Maybe today's not still an important day. Uh, it, maybe we can lead into talking about what's going on uh, today in the case. Thanks, Ben. Thanks for having me back. Uh, and glad to be on with Jeremy as well. Well, today is a day that expert discovery is closed. So basically, all fact discovery, all expert discovery, which means expert depositions, all of that concludes today. Um, normally, from here, we would start moving into the uh, uh, motions for summary judgment. We're waiting on Judge uh, Torres to rule on the motion to strike Ripple's fair what, notice. By the way, what, what happened to Judge Netburn? Is she still involved? What, do we have two judges now? I was confused on that. Yeah. J judge Netburn is the magistrate judge, and she okay. basically has been handling all the discovery. Okay. Dispositive motions like summary judgment, motions to dismiss, that will be handled by the judge herself. So she's the actual judge. So she's higher judge than the Torres. magistrate. Judge Torres is the actual judge assigned okay. to the case. And Judge Netburn is basically the magistrate judge who is helping her handle all of the discovery okay. issues. But we're still waiting on the motion for reconsideration, which I would expect possibly at the end of this week, if not, certainly next week, where Judge Netburn is ruling whether or not the Hinman email, the 63 emails, she previously ruled that that was discoverable and needed to be turned over to Ripple. The SEC filed a motion to reconsider. They flip-flopped their arguments, and they're trying to keep that um, not discoverable to Ripple. I think that uh, the motion for the strike fair notice, I think that's not that big because I really don't see – it's huge if she denies it. I mean, if she grants it because right. then Ripple will She be was allowed. never going to accept it, though. Right, but the, the, the real issue right now for me is this deliberative process privilege because the SEC does not want those 63 emails – because imagine this, 63 emails went around talking about this Hinman speech. What are the chances, Ben or Jeremy, that XRP was not raised? Now, one person said, hey, what about XRP? How does that fit into the mix? So yeah. when we get that ruling, that's going to determine how the case proceeds, I believe. Now, it, just to follow up on that, John, before I move to Jeremy here, when you have a lot of this stuff that is being struck down as evidence, I mean, the fact that that you know, the SEC has had so many fails in this area uh, in terms of, you know, a, a lot of losses uh, for things that have been struck down uh, or things that Ripple wanted in, have made it in. Even though this stuff doesn't necessarily make it in, do, does this have a compound effect on the judge? Like, the, the judge can't put it out of her mind that this existed, right? Go ahead, does that Jeremy. make sense? Yeah, so if I could just jump in on that one. Sure. A judge is supposed to be able to put it out of her mind. So a judge is supposed to be able to review evidence in camera, which isn't really evidence yet, and then say, okay, this isn't really evidence that's supposed to be involved in the case. Now, whether the judge is really able to do that or not, I think it does affect her thinking no matter what. So yeah, once the cat's out of the bag, the cat's out of the bag. Yeah, I, that's that's the way I would probably see it i mean if it's something negligible that's not really a big impact but some of these things have been big deals so jeremy what so we talked about what's going on today in the case uh where the expert discovery is over in your view what is like the biggest development you know since november uh because it seems like we haven't got a lot of news since then what's the biggest development that people uh should be paying attention to well, I think the next big ruling is going to be on the motion to strike the fair notice defense. Whether that stays or goes is the big motion that's pending. In discovery, what John just touched on is the big issue, whether those 63 emails come out or not. You have to understand that what the SEC has done in this case, as far as those emails up to this point, is extraordinary. I mean, in essence, they were supposed to turn these emails over about nine or 10 months ago, and they just refused. And then they were ordered again, and they refused. And then they were ordered the third time a couple weeks ago, and they said, you know what, Judge, we're going to ask you to reconsider your opinion, which I've only done once in 20 years of practice. And then if they lose that, they're going to ask Judge Torres to reconsider what Judge Nippern said. So it's really extraordinary what's going on with these emails. It's not normal. And that's why I, at first I wasn't quite on board with John, but now I'm 100% on. There's something in those emails they do not want us to see. Wow. Well, I think there's a lot of stuff that both sides don't want us to see. And I think that's why, you know, even when this happened, even when this comes out, when the settlement happens, I think 
majority of anything that was integral in making the decisions are probably going to be, uh, you know, struck from the from the public eye, going to be redacted. I just don't know how much precedent is going to come out of this.